Judith was an amazing woman risking her life to save the people. However, she used deception to combat the situation. Is deception lying permitted to bring about the greater good? And wouldn't it have been against Jewish laws for Judith to handle and take uh, Holofernes' uh, head? Was it necessary? And was the book of Judith historical fiction? Okay, so those are good questions. Now, we have that question that comes up, and that is that there seems to be some, some goofiness going on with uh, telling the truth and so forth. Yet, it's not the first time that we see that. Uh, the, quick, the quick answer is that God does write with crooked lines at times. And the, the greatest example of this is Jacob and Esau. Now, when Jacob ended up with the birthright from Esau, there was no funny business going on there. He just asked for it. He said, give it to me and I'll give you this porridge. And so Esau gave him the birthright. But the blessing that goes with that, the blessing... There was some shenanigans there. Shenanigans is uh, Greek for tricking. Not really. But there was some shenanigans there where he, he, he pulled one on Esau, and he ended up with the blessing. There was some lying that went on, right? Now, the question is, did he get the blessing? And the answer is, yes, he did. He got the blessing, even though there was that deception in the story. There's a mystery there a little bit, isn't there? Because um, later on, we see that, that Jacob himself was kind of wondering if he had God's blessing. Remember that? He's wrestling with God, and he's, I want your blessing. I'm not letting you go until I get your blessing. And of course, he had that, he had that blessing, and, uh, and it held. And so that is very interesting. Now, really, the question there is, aren't, aren't there consequences? And the answer to Jacob was, uh, yeah, there was consequences. There was some serious consequences because he ended up going up north to a city called Haran, and that's where he met his wife, Rachel. And he made a deal with his uh, uncle that he, would, that he would work seven years for Rachel. And uh, he did. And on the wedding night, he thought, Everything's going to go great, you know? And he woke up the next morning, and he was in the tent with Rachel's older sister, Leah. And he was outraged. And he went to, to Laban, and he said, what gives? He said, I worked seven years for her. And uh, I ended up with Leah. And Laban said something very interesting. And the, this was the consequence because you know, of the shenanigans. And, and what Laban said was, I don't know basically where you come from, Jacob, down south. But up here, in Haran, the oldest goes first. He tricked Esau, and he, he lied to his father when his father was in the darkness of his old age and couldn't see. He couldn't see Jacob. When did Jacob get fooled? He got fooled in the night, and he didn't see. And so you have this, uh, this idea of what goes around comes around, and, and there were consequences to it. Now. Part of the answer to this, I think, is, is hooked onto that third aspect of the Judith question, and that was, uh, is this historical fiction? And the answer is, most certainly. Uh, Judith is historical fiction. You have historical figures mentioned, like Nebuchadnezzar. They're actually mentioned in the story of Judith. Yet, the, the truth about who they were and who they led, what country and so forth, isn't right. And so, most scholars conclude that this is historical fiction that is teaching us something about the faithfulness of God, and it's teaching us something about this, this lady by the name of, of Judith. And by the way, historical fiction doesn't mean it's, it's, it's fake, like it's not, it's not really inspired. It's inspired by God, and the, the goal is for us to discern what is the intention of the author, discern what kind of literature this is. If it's historical fiction, then we can dismiss right away, okay, this isn't like uh, the history of the South in the United States. This is, his, this is historical fiction, and so then we have to determine, well, Lord, what are you saying in this? What are you saying in this in terms of yourself? You call that the allegorical, 
the allegorical sense. And then the, the moral sense, how does this relate to me? What lessons can I learn for myself? And then the anagogical sense, the future, what does this say about the future? Now, you got the rest of your life to go back to Judith and think about it, you know, uh, with those things in mind. But what we can learn from the book of Judith is that no matter what your place is in society and no matter what limitations you have or sorrows you have experienced, God can use you in a very powerful way. But I really do want to get across to you this idea that because it's historical fiction, it's not good, it's not inspired, it is not worth your time. It's, it's all wrong. It, it is worth your time. It is inspired. It does teach us things. Is it history as we understand chronological history? No. It is historical fiction. It's to tell uh, a truth. Remember, listen, Jesus told parables. Is, is that historical? Probably not. It's historical fiction, historical stories that he's telling to tell us something that we need to know. And that is one type of salvation history. If you enjoyed this video and you still have more questions about the Bible, remember to subscribe to this channel and download the free Ascension app for more Bible answers.